Welcome back, everybody. Coming up in this episode... I've got that horrible Jew Bears pass to do um, where I broke my diff last year. Unfortunately, we do. But come on, let's go. On to see if the curse of Jew Bears pass strikes me again. After a month away from the civilizations of supermarkets and petrol stations, whilst being Aldeed in Namibia for a year, it was time to duck back in, catch up with what was happening in the world and stock up again. Ready to head out into the bush for another month, or longer, if the news was especially bad. We are up here, by the way, in the very northwest of the country, the most remotest part of Namibia, and in need of some diesel. But standing in our way was Ubers Pass, where the previous year my front axle's differential exploded, leaving me somewhat stranded, and previously I'd rescued this truck when the track had destroyed all of its tires. Were these just a coincidence? Or was this pass a cursed nemesis for me? Whilst it's not the world's highest or worst mountain pass by any means, there is a one kilometre section that is pretty steep and rocky, and really hard on your vehicle. The whole area is formed from very jagged rocks, real tire shredders. It'll be fine. Right, let's go. So I set off towards it in the midday heat with a small sense of foreboding and trepidation, to be honest. Whilst not superstitious in any way, and having driven numerous much worse tracks in my eight years around Africa, I couldn't shake off a suspicion that this pass and I had some bad energy that wasn't finished with. That lovely feeling of being the only one to have ever driven on the track. Of course, the track wouldn't have existed if that was true, but uh, it's obviously been a little while since anyone's driven on here. So it's that weird sense of exploration. <laughs> so we're coming back up to join the last little bit of a track to Roy Drum, Red Drum. And then we got about sort of 10 or 12 kilometers of slow rocky going up to the pass. And then there's a little village town on the other side of the pass. We'll see if the campsite, campsite there is open. And that concludes our Marion Fluss little adventure. I have to say I remember it very differently from last time. There was literally no one here, none of these shops, nothing at the other end. So the whole place seemed just bigger and more remote and bigger distances. All right, so coming up to Red Drum again. Last time we came from the right hand side and this time we're gonna swing by the left. Okay, so until next time Roy Drum, we shall see you later. Oh, stiff neck, oh, stiff back. <laughs> Hard work doing this for you guys, so I hope you appreciate it. has to be one of the crappiest, rockiest <laughs> little bits that I know of. <laughs> ah, it's just tedious to get to this pass and then it's just like, you know, like a kilometer of just killer, killer rocks that just want to rip your tires. So I don't like it. Never, yeah. Silly, driven all around Africa, blah, blah, blah. But uh, it's just things that are going to kill your equipment, you know, your tools that you need to get around. Anyway, it'll be fine. Uh, No damage. It was on this riverbed crossing where I'd uh, I'd kept tried to keep driving with the differential, and I got to the bottom and I just couldn't get out. I had no power. I managed to uh, take the prop shaft off, and then I managed to crawl up here, uh, much to my relief then drive all the way down to the right drum. So yes, that was a stressful time. Very, very stressful time. So uh, 
with trepidation, <laughs> I will continue down here. The real tire shredders these rocks are. I know I keep going on, but uh, it's hard to get good tires here. Uh, not impossible, it's not like the rest of Africa. But, uh, you know, they're kind of expensive. Uh, it's been slow and tedious, uh, taking it about an hour to do something like eight kilometers, I think. It's just uh, half sharp rocks, you just gotta crawl along and try and avoid as many of them as possible. On a slightly more open flat area here and we've got the worst little bit to come. As I said it's not the off-roading is particularly bad uh, you know the bumpiness or anything like that it's just uh, the nerves <laughs> of the tire shredding. So I lost a, a tire on my last trip just a huge big chunk cut out of it I don't know where it happened and another two of my tires were pretty much chewed up Namibia is just hard on tyres, it's really frustrating. I could have taken a much longer route round, but uh, you know, I thought I'd relive the, the memories of this one. <laughs> also, I'd uh, let you share in it as well. So anyway, it's all fine so far. Uh, you know, just it's a bit of luck really. You can drive over the same rock three times and who knows what will happen each time. It's not a bad idea to stop quite often on a tiring and tedious track like this one. It helps break up the frustrations into smaller pieces and helps you keep your patience. So I look for any vaguely interesting reason to stretch my legs. In this case, I thought I'd go looking for snakes in the riverbed. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not running away from a black mamba here. Although there were plenty around up here. I'm running back as I remembered I'd left the dash cam rolling, which would be eating up valuable disk space on my editing hard drives. type of rock I'm talking about. It's just uh, you know, it wears down. You end up sort of driving over this the whole time. You get sharper edges and bits that stick out and bits that are harder than others. It's annoying losing a tyre. It's kind of expensive as well. Uh, plus the hassle of changing it. You know, it's 40-45 degrees today. Okay, the steeper part starts now. The track in parts is quite slanted to the right, so my real fear here is tipping over. A few lost tyres I can live with, but a lost landy, not so easy, especially way out here. One of the keys is to select the right gear, concentrate like your life depends on it, and go just fast enough to maintain momentum. Now you know the theory, let's see how it pans out in reality. Righto, hold on tight, clench your buttocks, grit your teeth, and pray for the front differential. In fact, for all of our mechanical parts. Here we go. Over to start with. Yeah, too much of an angle there. Go to second gear. Okay, certain death to the left or certain death to the right. <laughs> Let's try certain death to the right. Just lock on. Second gear. Here we go. Okay. 
Not so good. Uh, big stretches there. Hard. Hard? Come on, mate. Toughen up. You've got the second part to do now. Go, go, the mighty Landy. Bring it on! That's it. Come on, girl. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Come on, Landy. We can do it, girl. We can do it. We can do it. We can do it. Ah, just don't break anything, please. Come on, girl. That's it. That's it. That's it. Okay, we are kind of at the top, are we? Oh, they're a bit more tortured again, yeah? Worst rocks just there. Man, oh man, <laughs> the Kimball didn't survive. <laughs> I didn't know what to make of that. <laughs> Alright, uh, let's continue. There we go, there we go. Slowly, slowly, that's it, that's it. I don't 
know if you got any of my uh, facial reaction on that, but that was... Uh, I, I must admit that was... Uh, wow. Upon stopping to retrieve the camera mounted on the front bumper, I had a small heart attack when looking down and seeing it was gone. Obviously it had fallen off on the bumpy track somewhere, meaning a long walk back to find it where it would probably be smashed into pieces. Flippin' heckin' fudge cake. <laughs> but then I looked up and realised I'd changed the mounting halfway through, and it was still in place up on the roof. <laughs> Happy with that, and realising that releasing a little tension now and then when you're on your own is a good thing, I had a little celebration at having made it to the top, and to show my appreciation to the mighty Landy once again. Well done, mate. However, a quick check underneath left me feeling a little bit less joyous up here on this lovely mountain pass all alone, and with no prospect of any other vehicles coming along. Out of there, just not a good sign. Okay, the axle's leaking. All right, better check that out. Eh? So, from under the badly leaking landy, I realized that the curse of Ubear's Pass had struck again. Why does this pass hate us so much? Thanks for sharing the bumpy drive all the way to the top. I'll see you again for part two as we assess the damage and see what we can fix out here in the middle of nowhere. Right, that's over landing. <laughs>